D, who asks, do hosts think there are benefits to believing spiritual things? So let's have a look at that one. D, uh, give us a rundown of what it is exactly that you're asking. Hi, guys. Thanks for taking my call. Um, so, yeah, uh, by, by my notes here, you can see that I come from a background of charismatic fundamentalism, Christianity, and eventually found my way to kind of a... Buddhist paganism sort of thing. Um, so the, the basic thing is I rejected Christianity as a valid, uh, not just religion, but way of life, uh, way of contributing to the world, a way of... Um, uh, improving oneself and uh, became very interested in paganism and Wicca uh, generally just basically set it down settled down into a non uh, into a solitary lifestyle with with uh, a lot of study into Buddhism and um, I believe I still believe that there are uh, spirits that you can interact with, but generally my practice, I don't interact with them so much as I just try to, you know, access kind of a, a higher form of consciousness with meditation and ritual. Um, I believe in the Buddhist, uh, you know, that suffering comes from thwarted desire and that uh, and, and basically I still find um, at times that, that a spiritual outlook can be beneficial and I'm just wondering what you guys think about that Scott do you want to take this one first sure sure um <laughs> The, I mean, the short answer would be, yeah. I mean, most things in life have some benefits and some some drawbacks. For example, um, uh, if you if you're talking to a heroin addict and they're facing uh, 48 hours of 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 discomfort if they're trying to break free of their addiction, giving them more heroin will have some benefits. OK, and people can even die uh, when they're going through withdrawal symptoms. I mean, they can be very dangerous and, and, and even deadly. And so if you're asking. Are there benefits to believing in spiritual beings? Sure, sure, there could be. Um, I, I would want to see that demonstrated, but I think it wouldn't be too too challenging to find somebody gaining some sort of positive thing for for believing that. Now, if you're if you if the question is. Uh, in general, is it a good thing to believe in to hold irrational beliefs? In that case, I would say I would say no. There can be advantages, short-term advantages, uh, proximal advantages, that kind of thing, uh, to to holding those beliefs. But I believe in the long run, uh, it's it's harmful. I think having irrational beliefs is harmful because it it pulls us away from the truth and in the long run will come to bite us in the ass. And so depending how you're answering the asking the question, are you saying, is it possible that there are any advantages to holding spiritual beliefs? I would say, yeah, sure. Is it an overall a good thing, uh, an advantage to have? And I would say no for that. What do you think about that? Fair enough. Um, no, fair enough. Um, absolutely. If you, if, um, I, I, I kind of think that there are, are a couple of different sides to the debate between spirituality and atheism. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I'll be very honest. I'll be very honest that um, I'm I'm a little erratic in my thoughts and feelings about spirituality. There are some days when I say, 
you know, look, this is just totally irrational to be believing this and thinking about this this way. And then there are other days where, you know, I I just, I, I feel so, oh, so... Well- D, let me ask you this. Why, why did you why did you want to ask this question to us today? Are you trying to do you hold spiritual beliefs and you're trying to convince yourself that it's okay to have those beliefs? If that's the case, then uh, I will absolve you. It's okay that you have spiritual beliefs if that's the case. But if you're if you're wanting to know if this is a uh, uh, something that is going to be beneficial for you in the long run? Is it going to benefit humanity? Is it, is it a generally a good idea to hold irrational beliefs? And here I'm assuming that spiritual beliefs are irrational. If, if, you, uh, if you are holding those spiritual beliefs under a rational basis, then that changes everything. Uh, I've never seen such a basis made, um, but if, if you're in, the, in that boat, then I would love to hear that from you. But how, why are you asking this question? Do, are you trying to justify things you've already done or are you exploring, uh, you know, are you exploring your own beliefs in hopes of maybe improving things in the future? I think that, that it, it, it is more that I'm exploring, um, okay. exploring my beliefs. Um, I like listening to talk even. I like listening to Matt and, uh, Eric and Me too. Forrest, and this is the first time I've heard you guys. This is the first time I've actually heard you guys specifically, but I've been enjoying listening to you as well. Um, I, I, I'm kind of coming from the from the uh, the thought that there are different types of spirituality, like different religions. Okay, that. Are definitely harmful. Uh, I like I said, I came from a charismatic fundamentalist background, and my reason for leaving those is a lot different. It wasn't so much a logical thing as it was, you know, people call in and they want to they want to justify their belief in spiritual things by the the happy and cotton candy and fluffy feelings they get when they interact with Yahweh or Yeshua. Uh, I didn't have that experience. As a matter of fact, I had really negative spiritual uh, uh, experience. Dee, let me ask you, let me ask you one question here and then I'll, I'll uh, let Richard talk for a little bit. Um, what's more important to you? Being correct having your beliefs be true or having your beliefs be a certain particular way? I mean, do you want to justify things that you already believe or is it more important to you that you believe things that are true? I, I, I do want truth. Um, and that's why I say I'm, I'm erratic. I, I'll freely admit it. I'm erratic. I want, I want truth, but I, I, guess in a really deep part of me I'm not really ready to let go of, of certain spiritual things too and that's, yeah, that's of, very I'm common that's very common it's it's very common and okay. it's also right. a, it's also a very good place to come to or from that acknowledgement within yourself that that's the case I have so many things I want to talk to you about <laughs> and, and I know we don't have the time to talk to them all about them all on this call uh, I want to kind of go down the route of uh, you know what is it that convinces you about the kind of the supernatural elements of what it is you believe I want to go down your the route of you know you know you know you mentioned Buddhism do you think that people on kind of doing bad things in Buddhism that happen to people? Because there are. Uh, my background is very much not as a practitioner or as such, not as a, a believer in the supernatural elements, but my background both academically from uh, the textual point of view and uh, from a meditation point of view is in Buddhism. So, uh, mm. you know, 
you, you said some things that like the about suffering Duca. Uh, that is, you know, well, Duca makes sense. Yeah, it does. There is suffering in the world. Uh, it's very often mistranslated, by the way, as uh, life is suffering, but that is not what it means. It means there is suffering in the world. Yes, there is. Uh, and and I think the three kind of marks of existence in Buddhism, Dukkha, Inicha, and Anatta, have all got, uh, you know, good... Uh, psychological framework behind them that doesn't mean the the supernatural elements are true uh, within that religion and there is uh, as i said I, i'm i'm coming in with a thousand questions in my head i want to ask you uh, you know let's concentrate on the specifically on the super supernatural elements of the practice that you do that you are convinced exist that you're convinced are real so let's drop the spiritual label because that's confusing to a lot of people some people like sam harris use it in a kind of a psychological form which really really gets on my tits really annoys me uh you know <laughs> other people there's don't have a proper definition so let's just drop the spiritual thing altogether let's talk about the supernatural sure. elements purely supernatural elements of your practice and what convinces you that those things are true uh it, it's it's just the uh like in meditation, um, helps. I, 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 and again, is the the word feeling. Okay. Um, I don't have I don't have visions when I meditate, but um, and and I don't meditate on a specific. Supernatural being, I wanted—I almost said spiritual, but I was to have, to the supernatural. I don't focus on a god or a specific spirit. I, I focus on reaching outside of myself and letting my mind connect with something on a on a different level of consciousness. Um, but why do you th what what is it about that that makes you persuade you that that's supernatural in any way? I've been meditating for over twenty years. I've had these, uh, you know. <laughs> I'll, I'll leave this for the outro because I've got a specific point I'm going to make later on in the show anyway. But I've had these these experiences of uh, you know that uh, paraphrase uh, that Donovan paraphrased. Uh, an old Zen poem uh, and, you know, saying things along the lines of without speaking the lyrics of his song exactly, you know, first you see a mountain, then you don't see a mountain, then you see a mountain again and you understand it fully once you've, you've done it. I've been there, done that, bought the T-shirt, but I'm not convinced mm. that there's any supernatural aspect to it. And, you know, I, I think... It's very easy when you're in that state of contemplation to kind of and and this Buddhism itself, the Buddhist scriptures actually warn against this 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 kind of thing that we go into when we get into the the kind of the four jhanas and we get into these uh, states where we believe that we kind of we are one with everything and that's actually warned against. In, in the Buddhism, uh, you know, not to get attached to that because that is not real. It's not a real thing. Even the Buddhist scriptures themselves warn us against that feeling of, of oneness with everything, that kind of supernatural, that, that divine feeling, because they say it's not real. This is something which oh, it, it's pleasant. It's that pleasant that we have to guard against it, not to get stuck there. We have to right. surpass that within meditation. So even the scriptures themselves, although the, there's lots of supernatural elements in, in the Buddhist scriptures, but even the scriptures warn themselves against getting stuck in that state of feeling that you've got like got that divine 
connection to one and everything they say this is not a real thing so i'm really really interested in how you kind of how this state how this feeling is kind of saying to you this is supernatural how is it saying this to you that you know this is a supernatural part of it rather than the psychological aspect of meditation um you know, I guess that from an early age, I was taught, you know, that Jesus is real, angels are real, God is real, that it is possible to communicate with them, that it is possible to know uh, what they want. Um, I, I believe... I. See, I think that's why I call this. I'm kind of trying to find a way to transition. Let me let me just say, Dee, because that mindset. Yeah, I I, I don't. I, yeah. I I've said this many many times on the show, Dee. I do not want to deconvert anybody from the stuff they believe. I want to give people a framework for assessing the things they believe, and then wherever that takes yeah. them that that's you know that's where it takes them and I, I just want to scaffold that that way of assessing things in a better way and i think it's really really important to ask yourself questions like this and i i so applaud you for calling the show for saying to yourself i'm in this difficult position where i'm not quite sure what it is that i'm you know i'm, I'm to in and fro in between these beliefs i have and I want a second opinion on it. And I hugely applaud you for that. And I, you know, for me personally, I would say to you, ask yourselves those questions. You know, wh when you're thinking about things, you be my voice. Use my voice if you like. I don't know why you'd want to use my voice, but use my voice and as, as that like little demon on the shoulder saying, you know, why is it that I believe this? Is this a psychological experience? Is it really supernatural? Let me look into it further. Let me try and dissect it because it's that dissection that will get you to what is really, uh, you know, what is uh, justified in believing and what is this kind of, maybe it's indoctrination of you, as you've alluded to from your past, Maybe it's influences that have come later in life. Maybe it's influences that have come from Buddhist or other texts that you've read that are influencing you. But really kind of try and dissect and pull that apart and say, what is it? Is it this? Is it that? And and just lay that open. Lay it open bare and you'll be, you know, I find it easy talking to you because if you're from a meditation background, you'll be used to doing this anyway. Lay yourself open bare and just observe those different things and those different aspects and try and allow uh you know try and allow the the kind of the one which is most justified to present itself to you and really scaffold it you know go into the buddhist scriptures and have a look at it go into psychology and have a look at it and what that's saying about it i think you might find that really really helpful uh, there's so much I want to talk to you about. I, I'm going to let Scott speak to you just finally before we let you go. Uh, we have got more calls because I could talk to you forever in a day because I find this fascinating. Before mm, I, I stop know. speaking to you, I just want to ask you which school of Buddhism it is that you're coming from or is it just kind of non-denominational? Um, I, I, I have read a lot from His Holiness, the Dalai Lama, and from the Vietnamese monk Thich Nhat Hanh. Yeah, um, Thai, yeah the, uh, is, I, the Plum I, Village. I read them a lot more, right, Plum Village, and yeah. I use their meditation. Uh, uh, the Plum Village app I have, uh, I use a lot. I've yeah. actually read more of them than I have of uh, the Dharma. Um, not, uh, I'm not familiar with the actual, you know, scriptures, I guess you would call them. Yeah. I was always kind of, yeah, I was always kind of under the assumption that Buddhism wasn't 
a religion in the, in, in the traditional sense of the word, but um, because uh, the Buddha never held himself up as, a, as like a messiah figure or anything like that. Um, yeah, you're, you're very easy to, uh, to, 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 to talk to. Uh, I appreciate that. Uh, and, I, I, I and I'm stuck in the spiritual thing because I, I'm stuck in the spiritual thing be, be, because of the experiences that I had early on in my Christian journey. Um, I'm, I, I'm still... I'm still kind of convinced that they were supernatural experiences and, and trying to understand them because they had a big impact on my life and, yeah, and, and on my absolute, psyche as well. It makes absolute sense that that early scaffolding that you've had in your life is going to you know present itself in the later things you do. Uh, I'm going to let Scott talk uh, talk you out of this call, and then we'll we'll move on and we'll take another caller. I've really really appreciated talking to you. I hope you keep in touch. Please email, uh, give, send us an email, and uh, you know address it to me, and I'll you know happy to go further. Feel free to call back, talk to some other hosts, get different opinions on on your you know I'd how on your journey that. as well. But I'll let Scott talk you out, and then uh, you know thank you for calling. Thank you. Yeah, D, I, I, I as well appreciate your call. I, I love it when uh, we have a caller that is legitimately curious, uh, that legitimately cares about the truth. And uh, I, you know, to be honest, I think that would be a, a good place to start. If you're if you're trying to examine your beliefs, we were talking to earlier callers about personal bias, right? And so we're drenched. Yeah. You know, we, we come into this world drenched already, and then we get continued to be drenched throughout our childhood of uh, of these of these biases. And so we need to my suggestion to you then is to start from that point that we talked about earlier. I asked you if you were more concerned about the truth or maintaining your beliefs. And you said the truth. And and my my hats go off to you there. That can be the most difficult step to take is right there is to is to tell yourself and admit to yourself that it's more important to you to be right, to be correct than it is for the beliefs that you currently hold to be enforced on reality. So I would start with there, start with your commitment to finding things that are true. Then pile on top of that, what kind of methodologies can I use to, to seek out the truth? Because you know that as human beings, we all bring our own biases to our interpretations of things. We all we bring our own um, incomplete sets of information that we have about the world. And so, uh, if you address your methodology before you get it, before you get into the details of any particular belief, right? So we make that commitment to find the truth, right. to be to seek the truth at least. Then we examine. Okay, I I, I set as my goal seek the truth, right? That that pithy little easy goal, right? We can just easily cross that off the to-do to list. Let's find the truth. And the next thing you, you do is uh, what kind of method can I use to find the truth? What method can I use that will most reliably bring me to that truth? And then once you've done that, then apply it to your beliefs. When as soon as you bring your beliefs into the discussion, as soon as you bring your own current state of mind, especially if it's a set of beliefs that have been uh, doused on you, drenched on you again, since your childhood, those can be very difficult to shake. And so if you don't even bring your beliefs into your thinking until after you've decided on your methodology, then it makes it a little bit easier. So uh, I'll, I'll echo Richard's uh, sentiment that uh, I, I appreciate your call. I, I wish um, I wish everybody was as curious as you. I love, I think curiosity is is uh, one of the most, if not the most important characteristics of, of being a human being. Um, it's what allows us, it, what, it's what motivates us to seek the truth and what allows us to search for the truth. And so, uh, so kudos there. So that would be my approach. Try, to, try not to bring, since you know your own beliefs will bring it, will introduce bias, then hold off on that part as much as you can, uh, uh, 
reiterate that commitment to finding the truth to yourself, look about methodology, and then do your exploration into the world. Hey, thank you so much, guys. I really My pleasure. appreciate the time that you spent with me. Have a great day.